Hello everyone, I am Vikram T. Maduri here and in this session I am going to discuss with you all the SAP MM FAQs part 1 and I would suggest you to before going getting into directly into the SAP MM there are certain basic uh, basic questions that we need to have answers with and uh, those things are covered in some other other sessions other videos I am just going to navigate to you and uh, I, I would suggest you to better go for uh, those basic questions, understand them and then come back directly into the SAP MM FAQs uh, part. So when you open YouTube, uh, just type SAP Real Time Project Training. When you just type it, you will get a channel here. This is a channel, just click on the channel and you will be getting uh, various topics here and there will be somewhere around 11 topics here I am going to add generic, generic topics here and specific to MM I am going to do it separately but these are all generic for all the modules you can you can go through them and you can get the knowledge on the basic uh, uh, topics and uh, here comes the uh, SAP MM uh, uh, FAQs so what exactly is SAP MM? SAP MM is a material management module in which uh, it basically manages the material so it, it's basically it basically covers the material administration so this module covers the procurement process master data master data vendor master data and the material master data then we have the inventory management valuation of material and account determination material requirement plannings and invoice verifications are all the things that we are going to cover in the SAP MM. Addition to this, we also have the uh, uh, goods receipt and uh, invoice receipt uh, kind of stuff where exactly we can involve uh, the MM part, a uh, little bit of MM part will be there also. So basically we are covering up the purchase, purchase process here in the SAP MM. So what are the fundamental segments in SAP MM? Determine necessities, source assurance, vendor selection, order processing, order development, goods received and in, uh, inventory uh, administration and invoice verification. So order development we can also call it as purchase order. And what are the kinds of uncommon stock accessible? So the kinds of unique stock accessible are subcontracting, dispatch, venture, pipeline, deals, arrange, arranged, stock exchange, returnable bundling with client and so on are the uncommon stock accessible accessibilities that we have in the uh, in the SAP MM uh, module. So tell me about the subcontracting cycle. So in subcontracting cycle, the PO is created, the purchase order is created with item category L. So for whenever, whenever it is a subcontracting type, then the category would be L. The goods is transferred to subcoordinator, sub, sub, subcontractor by 4, 5, 541 movement. For this movement, note, note, number, note number accounting documents take place. No accounting documents takes place, sorry. So when GR is done automatically, 543 movement takes place, which 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 takes care of the consumption of components from the stock. So you can I can also show that in the in the SAP system as well. But uh, as of now, I'm discussing only the FAQ, so let us stick to the FAQs and just remember that we have a 541 movement and we have the 543 movement. So 541 movement uh, takes place when we are transferred to subcontractor and 543 movement takes place which takes care of the consumption of components from stock. So how are the byproducts taken care of in the subcontracting? You can add these byproducts in the bill of material for the uh, header material. So what is meant by scales? Can scales be used in standard purchase order? You can fix a price in the info record for a say quality, quality from 1 to 100 price rupees 150 and if the order quality is quantity is uh, one, 101 to 500 the price is 140 so scales cannot be used directly in PO but can be pulled into the purchase of purchase order from various master data like info record quota arrangement and all so a particular we, we decide a particular scale for this scale 1 to 100 pieces uh, the cost would be 150 and from 101 to 500 the cost would be 140 so these are the scales that we have in purchase order so what is the difference between a contract and a scheduling agreement? So with regard to outline agreement, you can create the centrally centrally contract cross plan where you can maintain different pricing conditions for each and every plan. You can you have to create the release order in the, with reference to outline agreement. No detailed delivery schedule can be made in the release order. So no release document is created. 
only time dependent conditions can be created some item category uh, will be m and w can be used so uh, th there can be two item categories that can be used one is m and another is a w so contract and scheduling uh, i'll be di discussing about the scheduling agreement so these are all about the outline agreement then we have the scheduling agreement so the plant location must be entered in the scheduling agreement so it's mandatory for us to enter the plant location in the scheduling agreement so we do not have to create any other purchasing document except for delivery schedule line via uh, transaction me38 or mrp running with the appropriate settings of the source list delivery schedule line items are created subject to your specific requirement and you can create both scheduling agreement with and without uh, release documentation so subject to the document type la lp or lpa with selection of either frc or jit delivery schedule so these are the things that we have to take care of in the scheduling agreement so either time dependent or time independent conditions can be created subject to the customizing in the document type of the scheduling agreement so item category is, can either be m m and w so item category m and w cannot be used actually here so here item category m and w can be used in the outline agreement but in the scheduling agreement m and w cannot be used so what is meant by batches how can batches be searched so a batch is a subdivision of your stock of a material having the same characteristics for instance food production uses batches to indicate the day of production paint production uses batches based on production date and the used ingredients it is very hard to reproduce the same color in a, in exactly the same way at two different moments so we we basically create a batch for that so or maybe uh, divided in batches based on the mineral mineral content so you can search batches using the standard search facility match code key, key f4 based on the naming convention of the batch or if you use batch classification based on the characteristics of the batches okay so what are the settings required for quota arrangement to set a quota arrangement for the procurement of a material proceed as follows so we need to get into the master data first and in the master data we have something called quota arrangement we need to click on the quota arrangement and click on the main date enter the material and plant number we have to enter the details of that and enter and click on enter to display the overview screen of the quota arrangement periods so enter a valid validity period for quota management and enter date until which the quota arrangement is valid the start date is calculated by the system so press enter so select the quota arrangement and choose go to item overview to display the item overview screen of the quota arrangement so enter a quota arrangement item for each source of supply you can you want to include in in the quota arrangement so you must enter the following data so procurement type special procurement type so we need to click on special procurement type enter k in the s column for example it is a consignment uh, arrangement for the material exists with the vendor so vendor number procurement plan supplying plan procurement plan is the supply plan and quota column enter the quota assigned to each item and then press enter then the percentage distribution of quotas is calculated and displayed automatically by the system so we have to save the quota arrangement and the system assigns a number of quota arrangements item automatically so what you can do is to understand this process you can keep listening to this video and you can do it live on the system and maybe I will also do it on the live system and uh, uh, share that video with you later point of time but at this point of time I am focusing only on the PPT and making you understand for the preparation of the interview so you don't have to show it on the system in the interview remember that so we just have to remember the steps so if you remember the steps and you can if you can deliver it verbally that's enough you don't have to do it on the system so that's that's what is the focus here right now for me I'm basically focusing for the interview preparation and not for the real-time execution of it in the system for real-time execution of the system I'll have other videos so what are the differences between the release procedure with the, with classification and release procedure without classification and when are they used so release procedure with classification means the purchase requisition can be made released both at item level and at the header level as well so release procedure without classification can also be used for purchase, purchase requisition which is used for item level release only so you cannot release it at the header level all other external documents cannot be released with classification the two procedures are mutually exclusive that is to say you must decide to in favor of one of them item so you cannot use both 
cannot use uh, both the release procedures. So is it possible to have a release procedure without classification of a PO? No. Without classification of a PO, you cannot have a release procedure. Is it possible to have scales in a quotation? No. We cannot have scales in quotation. So how to give specifications for developments? So we normally prepare a business requirement document in which we specify what is required, what fields are required and what tables are required have to be referred for the required development. So this is basically for specifically for implementation projects in which we have the SAP MM uh, perspective. So how to create a purchase requisition or purchase order by MRP. So a purchase requisition is created according to the safety stock mentioned for the material or can be triggered from a requirement. So for creating a PO, you, you need to have the scheduled agreement in place. So after the MRP is run, the scheduled lines are generated which, which are nothing but the PO purchase order. So basically this is a very small difference between the purchase requisition and purchase order that we need to understand. Okay, thanks for watching this video. Do subscribe to our do subscribe to our channel, and uh, I'll be posting more more videos on the SAP MM FAQs. And uh, please uh, please give me suggestions on what exactly you need in SAP MM. And uh, remember that if at all if you need the configuration part, I'll get back to that whenever I have time. I'll share you that videos as well. But please remember these videos are specifically for interview preparation and not for real time execution of the process. So don't expect the real time execution in the interview preparation questions. I'm going to show that in other other videos, uh, other other videos in which we have the execution. Thanks for watching this video and uh, do subscribe to our channel.